two states together as one entity which it cannot stay, of course. We'll make sure of that. It's going to always be the Sultan of Sokoto. There is no way in this life that the Sultan of Sokoto can ever be a Yoruba man. In other words, every Yoruba person, including Lai Muhammad, including Tulu, every Yoruba person, especially a Muslim that subscribes to one Nigeria, they are saying that in perpetuity, the full and will not it over us. Some people may try to draw the analogy with Christianity and say, how about the Pope? There's never been an African Pope, but of course, for them, at least it is subject to a vote. One day, who knows? A black Pope may emerge. It has nothing to do with us. The same thing that I have against um, um, some of them, of the English persuasion when it comes to Christian worship, Anglican Church. There is no way in this life the Archbishop of Canterbury, appointed by the Queen of England, can ever be a black person. It's not possible. It is not possible. It can never be done. The same way, there is no way in this world that the Sultan of Sokoto, the supreme leader of Muslims in Nigeria, will ever be a Yoruba man. So every Yoruba person canvassing or campaigning for one Nigeria, he was saying that you have double yoke. A person just emerged the Yoruba man as the head of state of Nigeria because the Fulani said so. He came back again and became civilian head of state because the Fulani said so. Should they come emerge because the Fulani said so? When people, when Yoruba has wanted their own person to be the president, Fulani said no. Abiola, and he was not the president. What people are doing inadvertently, what people are doing with them, is that they are, they, I don't know, they bring this burden upon, burden upon themselves without understanding the idiocy of supporting one Nigeria. The reason why I touched upon this is because the only thing Nigeria is a totalitarian state. They give you the misleading and erroneous impression that somehow we are all together in a democracy. Nigeria is a totalitarian state. It's not a democracy. Why am I saying this? Now, there is um, insurgency all across the north. Restiveness in the south, so to speak. People are getting for their freedom. Let me tell you the recommendation that they come up with in Kaduna. The stakeholders recommended that security operatives be equipped with modern equipment to boost efficiency necessary to win the trust and confidence of the people. Who are the people running your security agencies? Fulani. Who are the people causing the problem of insecurity in Nigeria? Fulani. And I, I stand this night and I ask everybody who is in that zoo, every animal in the zoo called a Nigerian, I want to ask a simple question. Just name somebody, one person that reported the activities of Fulani killers and headsmen to any police or divisional police of um, um, headquarters manned by a Fulani person and something was done about it. Four times now, the Fulani headsmen have attacked Enugu. Nine times they've attacked Ebony. At no point during these attacks did the commissioner for police in any of these states, never ever during these attacks did the commandant or the, the head of army at the two division ever send soldiers to go and stop the slaughter of the innocent in the villages. Never. But they are there. Their job is to keep Nigeria united, not to secure Nigeria. That is why this evening, as we are live on air, I'm announcing that people should stop traveling in and out of the Enugu at night. Now, the Jamjawi that are operating between from Loba, 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 given to them by Ojus of Kali, Loba is a, is a terrorist base of the Fulani in our land. But you have governors all over the place. You have people living in Abuja and in Lagos, pontificating and talking about the place there about their beloved one zoo, one Nigeria. This is what is happening in our land. This was exactly what gave birth to Eastern Security Network. They have met in their Kaduna. They have held a meeting. Nobody said we should recall all headers and ban open grazing, oh sorry, not to ban, to enforce the ban on open grazing of 1969. Nobody is saying anything about it. No, 1968. And I must correct myself, 1968. 
They're not saying it. Nobody is saying that the bandits they claim that came from Mali, from Chad, from Niger should go back to their land. No. All that concerns them is security. Security. Because they need to hold all of you down. As they are pinning you down, the foreigners are coming in and settling in your farmlands and in your forests without you knowing about it. Or you may know, but you cannot speak. Those you are relying upon to speak have been selected by the foreigners themselves to serve their interest. And you call them governors, you call them evil, you call them ASA, you call them traditional, you call them local government chairman. These are people. It's a long running project of the following to select your leaders for you. And they have succeeded. And that is why, in our time, in this age that we are in, Fulani killers can go into a police state and kill people. Even the governor will not acknowledge it. The army will come and take away the dead bodies of those killed. So that the world will not know about it. Because if you go to bring me evidence, how am I sure that the kill people in the in the brain? How am I sure? Meanwhile, the army took away the bodies. But when the families were doing the killing, they were nowhere to be found. After the killing, uh, they communicated, say, Oh, we are done now, come and take the bodies. The army will come and take away all the bodies. This is happening in Biafra, this is happening in Ibo land. But you have governors, you have people that claim their governors. And they said they launched the other day to protect our land. Within three days of their launch of their so-called Ibubago, Ibu was under attack. They never responded. It fell upon IPOB to command the Eastern Security Network to go and do the needful to secure our land. And people don't understand what we are facing every blessed day. Every blessed day. You don't understand because they have limitless number. They have armies coming from these are full army. Nigeria has been promised to the full army. Britain has given Nigeria to full army people. For some of you who do not know, for some of you who are too stupid to understand, full army, full army own Nigeria right now. And they know there is no border. They build railway to Niger Republic. There is no scrutiny, no accountability, nothing. Niger people can come into the zoo and register to vote, they can do whatever they like. And all of you from the south, you're just there looking, saying what Nigeria. Sometimes, you know, out of, sometimes I get very, very upset. And I said to myself, why don't we allow these people to take over the whole of the south? So that your eyes can now open. Because some of you are still blind, you're so foolish. You don't understand what is happening. I'll give you a very simple example. I despise Dangote. He is not the richest man in Africa. And I will tell you why. Because he was in a monopoly. In America, he will be in jail. I keep saying this every broadcast I come and I tell you. All of you were there. Let me tell you what the full army is having in store for you. Go into ordinary business. In every sphere of the economy, the full army dominate. This, their stranglehold is total. They own over 90% of the oil wells. The reason why they own these oil wells is because people from the coastal region of Biafra land forgot who they are to allow the enemy to come in. That is why Ogoni land is polluted and can never be cleaned. That is why every year resource control, resource control with nothing happening because of the efficiency of divide and rule that they applied, of course the British applied. Let me tell you what they have done. Cement. Everybody must buy cement to build a house. Because of the way the white man taught us to build houses. Whereas before we used to use clay to build our houses to maintain the temperature inside at 26 or 27 degrees centigrade. Now all of a sudden it's all breeze block. There is a, a conductor of heat. Let's put that to one side. For you to build a house. Let me tell you how clever the Fulanis are with their British advisors. Everybody needs shelter at some point. If you're successful in life, you're about to build a house. And if you don't build, you're about to rent a house. You're not going to sleep outside. The landlord that built the house or the owner of the house must have built it with the cement. You see how clever they are. The Fulanis thought to themselves, let us control the cement industry. How are they going to control it? By killing off and closing every other cement producer in the country. So that only one man is not going to produce the cement. He's going to import the powder and bag it somewhere in Lagos. That's how you have done with the cement. 
over the years. Some of you may have forgotten, but my uncles used to work at Niger 7 Cement Factory in Kalago, built by Dr. Michael Lopa. Niger 7 is called, and Kalago Cement. Some of you have forgotten, but I'm sure if you are as old as I am, you remember BCC Lions of Bogo. Have you forgotten Lion Cement from Benue? BCC means Benue Cement Company. They used to have cement in Benue State. There was Elephant Cement, Ego Cement, Ashaka Cement, Boham Cement, even Ibedo had his own cement. Now, let me, people complain, they don't have any jobs, they are mistress, they have no jobs. But you people, the same for that you people idiotically voted for, or clearly voted for, are the people that shut down all these factories. They want Fulani to control you. They gave the monopoly, the license to import cement to one single Fulani man. Thank God. That was why they put Ibeto in prison. EFCC called him and imprisoned him to stop him from selling cement. Only one Fulani, only one, mind you, the control of the oil. Only one Fulani man. Some of you are so stupid in Nigeria, I don't know the type of God that made some of you. But I will educate and I will enlighten you. If you listen to us without bias, believe you me, like your life can never be the same again. Your brain will open. Let me give you an example of what is happening to you. Before now, there was nothing and I believe Obasanjo is very stupid, I'm telling you. Obasanjo is an idiot. Obasanjo was the man that robbed some some of this thing, I'm telling you right now this evening. Not only the Fulanis controlled the oil well, there were a lot of people, thousands of people working in the refineries. Let me tell you what they did next. They went into the refineries and they shut every refinery down. They went and built a refinery under Abacha in Equatorial Guinea. They went into a consortium with the British and built a refinery in Exeter, in England. Now, this crude oil that previously would have been refined in Ome, in Iguata, Port Harcourt, refinery, in Uwari, or to an extent, Kaduna, now we ship them abroad and made every worker in that place useless, rendered them unemployed. Money wasn't coming in. I want people to understand when Lai Muhammad was saying, what holds us together is more than what's here. All that rubbish. Nonsense. I want to tell you how full I need to go by your lights before your eyes, Koro Koro, as you're watching Papua One Nigeria, our flag, our team, uh, Super Eagles, Green Eagles, Signet, talking about the full I mean, we are stealing your lives away from you before your own eyes. Full I mean, was not content in owning the oil wells. They shut down the refineries where our parents were working, where you could study petroleum engineering, graduate, and find a job to feed your family. That sector was shut down. Remember, they shut down the cement sector. It's very critical. Every day there's construction going on, isn't it? It's a very critical sector of the economy. Building raw materials, of course. Fulani, Dan the one man. Now, let me tell you what they did very cleverly. They came to the petrol. Not only the oil well is not enough oh. <laughs> to tell you how much they hate you. They call you a Nigerian. Let's unite. They, they despise you. I'm going to ask you, they hate you. If not, why would they shut down all the cement factories and allow one man to import? I didn't say produce. Import. You will have limestone in Kalak right now in the boy state rotting away. BCC in uh, Nuboko shut down. Maybe you're not going to have taken it to a bag, not to produce, not to manufacture cement, but to import cement powder and rebag it. That's all that they do. And they claim they love you. They claim they want to see Nigeria progress. I am, I am, I am doing this program this evening to let the whole world understand that there is no basis for unity in Nigeria. Because the whole thing is based on evil and wickedness. Why? Because Fulani people are not hard-working people. They can't wake up by 5 or 4 in the morning to go to work. I challenge anybody 
all those factories that you see is Lagos in all those industrial bands. I challenge anybody anywhere in the world to tell me if a giant of wheat can wake up by four in the morning to go to work in a factory. I challenge is a challenge to everybody. Show me one. Now listen. They took over cement, which is very critical. They took over oil itself. The only way that people, private individuals, share oil wells amongst themselves. That is not enough. Instead of moving that oil to the refinery to be refined, where we can find jobs to make kerosene available easily, to make um, um, fuel available to run our okay, No, 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 not, not at all. To tell you how evil they are. Those screaming and shouting one nature to tell you how satanic they are. They moved all those jobs abroad by shutting down all the refineries that you have in your zoo country. And who is the judge of NPC? Fulani and the Kiari family. Understand? Now, you see what they did. They now moved crude oil abroad to the refineries that they built with stolen money from the public coffers. It's not, it doesn't end there. Denying you jobs is not true. It's not the end. It's not even their problem. Now, to bring that refined petrol back into Nigeria, <laughs> you will not pay subsidy again to bring back into the country what left the country for free. <laughs> hey, Zoom. Only if black people can reason. They took away the main sector, very critical in the building of an economy in the world. They took away oil, which is the only thing that you have, so to speak. They export it, they, they export it and they make money. They bring it back and you pay tax for it. Yet no refineries are working. That is how you have fuel subsidy. The meaning of fuel subsidy is that your refineries are not working. Not that they will not work if you turn them on, but because Food and we shut it down that they may control your lives. Two sectors. We must all eat, isn't it? Everyone must feed every day. You have to eat something. There is no food you cook in our land without salt in it. No, 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 no. You must add salt now. It's, it's normal. You cannot have tea in the morning without sugar. Dangote. Ordinary Indomie. Dangote. There was a death and I met in the Netherlands. They want to bring Indomie into the zoo. I think he, he brought sample, they arrested him at the airport and put him in jail. <laughs>